I made a, a small paper on Slovaks, Czech, Slovak reciprocity and the beginning also of Czech, Slovak misunderstanding at the Prague Slavic Congress in 1848. And also about the first attempt to put Czechs and Slovaks politically together, which is connected with František Palacký, partly. Uh, we must uh, put these events uh, to the revolutionary events in Austria. So I made here you know, a short chronology, which of course you know, and in red is marked the Prague Slavic Congress from 2nd June to 12th June. So it's uh, just after the second uprising in Vienna, which took place on 17th May, and uh, as, as you know, the imperial court and uh, M Emperor Ferdinand I, or King Ferdinand V, fled with the court to Innsbruck. And it's also, uh, however, after Pillersdorf Constitution, which opened uh, the space for constitutional development. But also, there is one very important point uh, that, in fact, here for the first time, uh, Austria in fact neglected or abandoned the idea of nation state. That's also what I say to my students. In Austria there were no minorities because there was no majority and you can't have a minority when you don't have majority. Here is the line which goes to December Constitution, to Article 19, to the Basic Law, Grundgesetz, which says that all nations, or in German wording Volkstamme, are equal or have equal rights. Alle Volkstamme sind gleichberechtigt. While simultaneously, here we have a second uprising in Vienna, we see that the revolutionary insurgents on the barricades have German flags, not Austrian flags. And here we have uh, the programs of particular Austrian nations. If you go through them, you see that they are incompatible. And it will continue throughout the existence of Habsburg Empire with some bitter end till 1918. Because it's not so that uh, the empire wouldn't like to meet the demands of the nations. The problem was that to meet demand of one nation was possible only on account of somebody else. So the final result is that all people and all nations were dissatisfied. And that's how the monarchy came to end, like, by the way, practically all multinational states in the 19th and 20th centuries. And here we have the Hungarian Revolution, which is also very important for the Slovak development. We must know that unlike in Austrian part, in Hungary, the main aim was to transform Hungary into nation Magyar state. I, use the term Magyar to distinguish it from Hungarian, because in English or German we cannot distinguish, like while you probably know in Czech and Slovak we can. Uhry, Magyarsko, Uherski, Magyarski. In other languages it's very difficult. Where the idea of political nation as it emerged in the West, mainly France, but also Scandinavian countries, Great Britain to some extent, but it's rather a bit problematic, it was that all people of one state formed one nation. However, in Hungary it was too late to establish something like that because the particular nationalities already had their own nation programs, which were incompatible with that Hungarian national program. That's why after in fact, uh, the endorsement of the so-called March laws or April laws, it depends, they were passed uh, by the Diet in Pressburg or Bratislava now in March, 18th of March, but they were sanctioned by the emperor or the king in April, so we can find in literature both term March laws and April laws, and which in fact formed the base of the Hungarian constitution, which then was valid throughout, not only monarchy, but up to, uh, eight, uh, up to theoretically late 40s of the 20th century, put 
that idea of one indivisible nation, which of course in new situation meant that objectively, regardless what uh, the initiators wanted, would lead to gradual Magyarization of non-Magyars. And it was incompatible with wishes and aims and goals of other non-Magyar uh, nationalities living in Hungary. That's why uh, very soon the ways of Magyar revolution, let's put it like that, and revolution of other nationalities split. They had to split. And uh, for very important moment is uh, the 10th of May, 1848, the requirements of Slovak nation adopted uh, at uh, Liptovsky Svaty Mikuláš, or to be more precisely in neighboring vicinity, uh, Ondrášova, because in Liptovsky Mik Mikuláš, the local governor, uh, vice governor Vicišpan forbade the meeting, which was uh, which convened to uh, adopt it. And uh, even uh, the protagonists of uh, these uh, requirements, which in fact, to put it short, asked for a federalization of Hungary and establishment of local self-government nation, semi-independent state within Hungary, which the Hungarians, of course, understood as a first step to dismembering of Hungary, and from their point of view, they were, by the way, 100% right. We shouldn't deny it. Uh, Stur, Hurban, Hoxha were accused of high treason and had to flee Hungary to Prague. Then they went to Vienna, Zagreb. Definitively, finally, they met again at the Prague Congress. Uh, here is the requirements of the Slovak nation as uh, were published in uh, the local press, Slovenske Národní Noviny. And here, Lajos Batáň, first Hungarian prime minister, because in fact, after the April laws, Hungary became, uh, Hungary became the semi-independent country, being very loosely connected with the rest of the monarchy. In fact, except the person of emperor, the king, there was very little left because Hungary started to organize their own army, started to print their own money, and this is incompatible with uh, one state as such. Uh, here, more radical Minister of Finances, Lajos Kossuth, then the dictator and the leader of Hungarian Revolution, and newly appointed uh, Ban of Croatia, Josip Jelacic, who then was a main figure of anti-Hungarian struggle. So Prague Slavic Congress here, uh, uh, Dr. Shimchak talked about, raised the question how many people uh, in Polish delegation really was. Well, uh, according to uh, the protocol, there were 61 persons in the Polish, uh, in the Polish delegation, or Polish Ruthenian delegation, plus 45 unofficial guests. Probably Karl Liebelt was one of them because he was not an Austrian subject. But these materials are not full. People were coming and going. So it's uh, really difficult to establish uh, the final number. Of course, uh, uh, the Czech Slovak section, or rather it had another name, Česko, Moravsko, Slesko, Slovenský zbor, Czech, Moravian, Silesian, uh, Slovak section, but it was never used because it was too long, included 237 persons, logically, because most of them were, we would say, at home, so for them it was much easier to come, including about 20 Slovaks. It, dependent, it depends also whether we consider Pavel Josef Šafařík or Pavel Josef Šafárik, who was his original name, a Slovak who used Czech, whether we will take him as, as a Czech or as a Slovak. Yeah. So uh, here is a, a Czech-Slovak section as was established on uh, 31st of May, 1848. 
uh, with uh, Shafarik as a chairman. And as you see, uh, there were no Slovaks in the presidium, but uh, several Slovaks, Michal Miloslav Hoja, uh, Ludovic Tur, and one more, yes, uh, Bohuslav Nosak, who is uh, today partly forgotten, but he, he was uh, by that time quite an important person. He used the pseudonym Nezabudov, were uh, members of the uh, Greater Committee. Here we have them, Stur, Miloslav Hoja, here is Nosak, Lutheran priest who uh, was an assistant of uh, uh, Urban. And the chairman of the Congress, František Palacký, Šafařík. Well, as you know, the uh, original program was to be concentrated on Austrian Slavs and uh, to the idea how the Slavs should uh, preserve Austria as a natural home for Slavs in Central Europe. Here uh, at the very beginning uh, came uh, to the contradiction between the Czech members and especially Ludovic Stur. Mm -hmm. Here is what Stur said on the first meeting of the Czech-Slovak sections on 3rd of June. Our goal is self-preservation. First we must serve ourselves and others. As long as Austria has existed, we have decayed. What will the world say to us if we stand no more than the maintenance of Austria? Let us not say we want to preserve Austria or create Austro-Slav empire. Let us rather proclaim that we wish to stand as autonomous Slav communities within Austria with the accent on the word Slav. Then the Austrian government can live with us. End of quotation. Uh, then the Plenary session met on the 5th and adopted the new program of Karol Liebelt, which was a shift from concentration of strictly uh, Austrian affairs to broader Slavic affairs, and new three main points were adopted as a program. To make clear to the world whether we are friends of liberty or despotism, we should issue a manifesto to all the European nations. By the way, this manifesto was the only real result of the Congress because it was really passed. Second, to express the desire of every Slav branch in the Austrian Empire to send a declaration to His Majesty, Emperor and King. Manifesto was worked out but was not sent, but we have the text. And to provide means for attaining our goals and maintaining our union. This was the most problematic point and we can say right now that nothing came out of it. Uh, on the 3rd June, I said that uh, Stu rejected Palatsky's idea that the main aim of the Congress is to secure further existence of Austria, which is connected with the fact that uh, he was not living in Austria proper. He was living in Hungary. And uh, for all these people, the existence of the Hungarian kingdom, of the kingdom of St. Steve, which existed here then almost 1,000 years, was something still natural, despite all grievances and all uh, problems and criticism which they raised against uh, the policy of new Hungarian government. Uh, more important was a session of the 7th of June, when came uh, on agenda the unification of Bohemian lands and Slovakia, which was presented by Václav Sturz and today completely forgotten Moravian lawyer, uh, attorney Max Otto. Uh, Václav Sturz was a Catholic priest and he said that uh, this will be the resurrection of Great Moravia, which of course in Moravia, this idea of old Moravia and Cyrillon Metodius were uh, much more lived than, than in Bohemia. And uh, the proposal was rejected by the Slovak members of the section. Uh, in the Great Committee that brought her on the same day, separation from Hungary was rejected by Stur, 
and also was rejected uh, uh, proposed military assistance, which was to help the southern Slavs, mainly the Serbs, who already revolted under uh, Josip Rajacic, and uh, also uh, against the very likely coming uh, conflict between the Croats and uh, Hungarian government. Here is Václav Svatopluk Stulz, today also practically forbidden. And what Stur said in the Great Committee on 7th June, we had to be diplomatic, uh, we, meaning we had to be cautious. In our declaration, we recognized the necessity of remaining for the time being within legal bounds, meaning within Hungary. Our nation is not so well outfitted militarily as the Croats or Serb. Our people still have not acquired full nationhood, meaning national <laughs> consciousness or national awareness. We still cannot speak openly to them. We have patriots, but if we, meaning Slovak patriots, but if we expressed anti-Hungarian sentiments, thousands of them would oppose us. Really later, when broke a Slovak rebellion against Hungarians, uh, we should keep in mind that much more ethnic Slovaks fought on the side of Hungarian army and Hungarian National Guard than in legions which the Slovaks established alongside the Vienna government. And uh, as far as uh, the question of uh, Josef Miloslav Hurban, uh, of the uh, military assistance to the Serbs and Croats against Hungary, Josef Miroslav Hurban said, each nation acts according to its circumstances. Our own weakness is to blame for the fact that we do not want to fight. Should the Magyars accord us our due, we could hardly expect them, draw our swords against them. But if the Magyars refuse, then of course fight. Meaning, for the time being, we are rejecting any idea of unification with anybody which would lead to the destruction of Hungary or could harm somehow Kingdom of Hungary. And especially is not on agenda uh, any unification with Bohemia and Moravia. This was, uh, there, there was a hefty discussion on this point. Usually, and it's a big question, uh, According to the protocol, František Palacki joined the session, but later. He is not at the beginning, he is not listed. But at the end, he said, okay, we discussed it, let's uh, put it aside now, we can discuss it later. They closed it down, that they will, be, uh, that they will convene imperial diet, which may, you know, somehow restructure the monarchy as such. And uh, generally, uh, the Slovaks say it's not on agenda now. We still believe that we can some come to the terms with our Hungarian partners. Only if not, then we can decide what to do else. And then uh, Trojan said now on agenda is unification of Bohemia, Moravia, and Silesia. By the way, unification with Silesia was completely out of question. It was unrealistic because not only Germans but also Poles from Teshon district rejected it. They sent a special memorandum in Polish saying that they do not wish to be part of, uh, of uh, uh, Bohemia, Mor Bohemia, Moravia, Silesia. And uh, Trojan said uh, Slovaks must decide on their own, mainly later they will do so. As we know, uh, finally, here is the part of, of that uh, draft of the petition to the emperor, where uh, is one paragraph about the Slovaks and Rutinen, meaning Rutinen from Hungary, not Rutinen from Galicia. Uh, and uh, or it's a very sensitive and problematic questions, and I had uh, quite a lot of problems, Rutinians and Ukrainians in Subcarpathia. Yeah. yeah, but I wouldn't like to go to details uh, now. And if you go through it, 
you see that, in fact, it's a paraphrase of those requirements from Liptovsky Svaty Mikuláš of 10th of May. This is what we want, nothing more. However, this petition was not sent to the emperor anyway. We know that the Congress uh, ended by the Pentecostal storm. Final session was scheduled for the 14th of June, but it never took place. Congress was postponed indefinitely and never convened again. But you know, here are causalities from the Pentecostal fighting. So you see that it was not something, something horrible. More horrible was than the arrests and investigations of the participants. But when a constitutional diet met first in Vienna and then after the third uh, Vienna uprising, it moved to Olmitz and then to Kromnežiš, Kremzir. Here we have a photograph from the times in, including the Archbishop Palace when the imperial diet took place. Uh, František Palacký again raised the possibility of unification of Bohemian lands with Slovakia. By the way, it happened when his first proposal, based strictly on historical laws, on division of, of the empire to the lands, by the way, Bohemia and Moravia were here two separate lands, was rejected, of course, by the German members. So he said, OK, and came with strictly another program based on strictly ethnical grounds where Bohemia, where uh, Czech parts of Bohemia, Moravia, but it's also important, the whole Moravia, not only the ethnical Czech parts, was to be connected with Upper Hungary, with Slovakia, despite the fact that in Hungary went the war and Hungarian deputies were not uh, elected and even Hungarian delegation was not uh, allowed to talk to the deputies, despite that the uh, German radical Democrats asked the plenum to allow them to speak. There were the Czech, cons uh, Czech liberals, Palacki, Riga, who rejected it. That the Hungarians, the rebels, shouldn't be allowed to talk. And uh, it was rejected by both German and Czech deputies by the majority and it was dropped from the final draft of the Constitution. We know that that uh, constitutional draft and Wurf never came, was never approved because the emperor dissolved the diet and Stadion's Constitution was introduced, which was concentrated only on western part of the monarchy. What I am coming to the end. What, according to me, you may not agree with me, proved the Slav Congress. First of all, the Slav unity in political sense proved to be a myth. It doesn't work. There were then later several congresses, especially in the 20th century, in Prague and in Sofia, before First World War. And then, by the way, after 1989, we had one such congress. It was Merze Show here in Prague also, but the political cooperation of Slavs is, is a nonsense because <laughs> there is nothing to bind them together. Secondly, the Czech-Slovak reciprocity and cooperation proved to be possible, but not political unity of any kind. Because Czech and Slovak political programs were incompatible, despite the fact that probably most of the participants and most of the people, generally speaking, were not aware of this then and even later. And, uh, well, that's enough. Thank you for attention. Yes, uh, I would like to thank you for this paper, which was very informative. I would like
like to make a couple of comments. And the main one is, I don't know if everybody in the room is aware of this or not, but this, is, this was a central fact, that after 1806, uh, the Habsburg Empire was an Ersatz Empire. In other words, uh, it was, as you know, a part of the Holy Roman Emperor, uh, Empire of the German nation. When Napoleon abolished that, uh, then this new entity called Österreich or, or, or Austria was invented. There was none before. There were uh, Erblander, there were, you know, uh, there was Tyrol, there was all of these other ones, but they were not brought together in any crown, under any crown. This was invented as opposed to the uh, crown of St. Uh, St. Stephen, uh, which was, of course, you know, a thousand years old and, and, you know, was not invented. Let, let's, let's put it that way. And the same is true of the uh, St. Wenceslas crown, which is what you refer to as the greater, you know, uh, Bohemia and so forth. Uh, on the other hand, I think that, uh, as you presented to us, there was still this uh, division and a very deep one between those nations that could be called historical nations, you know, like the Czechs, like, of course, the Hungarians, the Croats, and those that were not so-called historical nations, like the Slovaks and even the Slovenes, though, of course, they were Arab lander, but they were not considered Slovene, and all this, so that uh, uh, people like the Slovaks had a much uh, more difficult task of establishing a claim to their own separate and in particular independent state. It was much easier for the Czechs because let's face it, uh, you know, um, Bohemia was an elective, underlined, elective kingdom until 1618. Until, you know, <laughs> the White Mountain and all that stuff. So in other words, uh, Bohemia and even Croatia and certainly Hungary were in a different and much stronger position. But what is very paradoxical is that when he had a chance uh, Koshut and the others didn't go for a national state in an ethnic sense. They went for this historical greater Hungary, right? Because it suited them best. So in, that, in other words, no. uh, there was a conflict, a clash between two different <coughs> nations, no. one dynastic and the other nationalistic or ethnic, if you want to call it. That's yeah, of course, but that's what I said. That's yeah. why Czech and Slovak political programs were incompatible. That's right. Because the Slovaks, their attitude was the same as th that of the Germans in Bohemia. The Germans are historical rights, uh, forget about it. It's yeah. forfeited, you know. Now, in modern times, we are Czechs, uh, we, we are Germans, so we have the right to have our own state. While uh, the Czech argumentation was the same as Hungarian's one. Yeah. And it went one. I would like to make one comment to the name of Austria. Official name, Austria, Kaisertum Österreich, is from 1804, That's right. Right? That's right? Then, which is paradoxically, it was abandoned after Ausgleich and reintroduced only in 1915. But the name Austria unofficially was used already in the 16th century, but in different meaning. It meant the lands of Austrian dynasty because uh, the dynasty of, because by uh, Habsburg dynasty, the West understood only the Spanish Habsburgs. It means the dynasty which died out in 1700 by Charles II of Spain. While uh, those Habsburgs ruling in Central Europe were called Austrian dynasty. Casa del Austria, Maison Autriche, House of Austria. So Austria was used in the sense lands belonging or ruled by Austrian dynasty. But first one Hungarian voice, Mata <laughs> Firstly, I want to congratulate it was a very, very interesting, a very, very, very basic analysis with what about the, the North. I want only a, a short uh, mention that if we uh, talking about Hungarians or the Hungarian situation in, in this time, uh, though Hungary there is also a very complicated ethnic and a social problematic. I, I won't mention uh, uh, Polish uh, Dandinsky and Serbian Damjanic became uh, martyr of Hungarian revolution. 
the, if we are talking about Hungarian, there is also a mixture, and it, it's not mean that uh, somebody uh, serve uh, or belonging to the uh, Slav ethnic groups, it's not mean that uh, absolutely against uh, Hungarian. No, well, I. It was a more, more uh, case. You didn't say, but I want for the for the for the for the record. He helped me get out. That I never said something like this. Of course, many ethnic non-Magyars became good Hungarians. He, yeah. he, the, it's <laughs> very short. <laughs> because it's only sharp remark about the name Austria, because name, in fact, the first occurrence of the name Austria, Ostarich, was in a document of the Emperor, Emperor Otto III in the year 997. It's a land close to on Danube, yeah. so Niederösterreich, Oberösterreich. So, so the heritage of Babenberg dynasty, mm. who has died, died, died in the mid 13th century, there, there were great struggles between the Czech Chemistleeds and yeah. Hungarian Arpads for the heritage, and the winner was Habsburg. So from that time it was the heritage territory of the Habsburg. Yeah, so I agree. The, 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 uh, the we in Czech use uh, another term for this, yeah? Rakousi, yeah. instead of Rakousko. While Rakousko means the domains of Austrian Habsburgs. Yeah. Means it didn't exist before 1526. But Rakousi, of course, existed. But in the Latin, <laughs> Latin sources, the name Austria is from the mid 12th century. Yeah, but the not Latin name. Sorry. Yeah, but that's so, not the problem. <laughs> problem. There's no crown of Austria. Just, just, just only to the first point of your last slide. Uh, according to the so called uh, Slav uh, Unity, uh, that's also the program of Slav Congress, uh, which, uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't, uh, which is not according to reality. If we take uh, Palatsky's program of the Slav Congress seriously. There is no point of that. The point is only Austrian democratization uh, of, uh, of Slavs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, right? And uh, just um, we, we can maybe ass assess the failure of the Slav Congress to force violence from the outside as the beginning step towards the uh, no existence of Austria forever. Yeah, I agree with you, but then when came that second part of the Congress with Karol Liebelt, it shifted, you know, to... Yeah, but there is no point of program mm. then. Shafashik himself said that we, have, we are not the lawmaking body. We are not the lawmaking body. We can just, you know, have a meeting, you know, to discuss these attempts, but it will be the question of uh, land diets and imperial diets.